I had the privilege of being up front on every Sunday, so you get to hear my, my voice often, and, and I get to share stories here and there of in between songs and why we do what we do, but I don't, I don't think I've ever shared this story. So when Rick asked me maybe to share a little bit about what grace has meant to me, um, I knew pretty much right away what I would say. Um, I, I was in seminary in the late 90s, and while I was taking classes, I was attending a church and volunteering at the church, and eventually they, they actually brought me on staff uh, for, for one day a week to, to work with the youth. And I adored the students that I was working with. I was not as fond with some of the adults and the decisions that they were making in the church. It almost seemed like the things that I was learning in class, they were doing the direct opposite. And it was really making for an unhealthy environment. So when I graduated from, seven, from seminary in 1999, I wanted nothing to do with the local church. That may sound strange. Why would a seminary student want nothing to do with the local church? It was because of the experience that I had. So I was all in on trying to find a parachurch organization that I could work with. So when Fred Rowley in, in late 1999 offered me a full-time job at Camp Spotfire, I was thrilled. I was thrilled to be able to be a part of that and, and to come up and, and actually start putting into practice the things that I learned. But when I moved up here in, in late 1999, I, I did want to find a church home. And this, I was pointed to this body of believers. And over time, God has used this church not just to restore my love for the local church, but to grow. And it wasn't just the solid biblical teaching that we get each and every Sunday morning. It was the warmth I felt when I came here. The genuine Love that people had for me, the concern that they had for me was overwhelming. There was a period in my life while I was attending here where I was a wreck. And it was people in this church that wouldn't let me go. There's, there's a story in Exodus chapter 17 of of the Israelites going into battle against the Amalekites. And it's kind of an odd story because as Moses is leading his people, God instructs him to go up on top of this mountain and lift his rod up to heaven. And as long as Moses' rod is lifted up to heaven, the Israelites have no problem winning the battle with the Amalekites. It's when his arms grew tired and the rod began to fall that the tide turned in the battle. So Moses' brother Aaron and this other gentleman named Hur came alongside Moses and simply propped up his arms. What he was too tired to do. And there were people in this church that he got for me. And I'm guessing many of you call this place home for the very same reasons. The faithful, biblical teaching and the genuine love and concern that the body has for one. And I'm willing to bet all the money in my pocket against all the money in yours. That if we continue to do that, faithfully preach the word of God, and extend Christ's love and compassion and mercy to each individual that comes to this place on a regular basis and walks through that door 
for the first time. It is only a matter of time before we will need a new physical plan here because we will continue to grow. Because it's what God is calling us to do and it's what the world is desperately longing for. So when it comes to a new physical plant here, I'm all in. Because I see you guys, and I know you're going to continue to love each other and love the people who come here for the first time. And I'm willing to bet that Lou's not going to change the way that he preaches. So the only logical conclusion is we are going to continue to have the blessing of God fall on us. We are going to continue to live under God's smile. We are going to continue to grow. And a new physical plant right here will allow us to do that much more to the people that are coming here who are longing to hear from God and to be loved for who they are.